Just take a look at this crop, how lush and green these plants are. This is okra, a variety called Clemson Spineless. It's one of my favorites. Now, I love to grow okra for a number of reasons. One is, well, I love to eat the stuff any way you prepare it. I like it pickled, I like it in gumbos, and I even like it fried. The flower is very beautiful. I don't really grow it so much for its flower, but its flower is very telling. You can tell that it's a member of the mallow family, and I love its pale yellow color and deep sort of claret throat. But on a much more practical level, okra is a plant that can withstand very high temperatures. And this past year, we've had record-breaking temperatures well above 100, and these plants have just pushed right on through. But I will say this, they had to have plenty of consistent moisture. Now, what's interesting about this plant is that it's been a part of the American diet, particularly in the South, since the early 18th century. It's believed that the first okra seed were brought here by African slaves. Now, I direct sow my okra in rows like this, but I soak the seed overnight in water or in milk or buttermilk. My grandmother did this because the lactic acid would help break the outer hard covering of the seed down just a bit and it aided in germination and it really works. Now, one of the things you want to keep in mind when your okra begins to produce is you want to watch it almost every day because those pods can grow very quickly and you want to make sure you harvest them while they're tender. That's one of the reasons I love Clemson spineless because the spines on the okra pod are virtually non-existent, which makes them the perfect candidate for cooking in all sorts of recipes. And I have to say, I love having them grilled directly on an open grill. Give it a try.